we had a, a stock market in aggregate that really didn't do so damn good. Um, bond investors, well, they got buried pretty much. Uh, interestingly enough, though, in, in light of all this, and this isn't going to be a surprise to you. I, at least I don't think so. But energy, the energy sector was still the best performing part of this freak show market here. Speaking of that, WTI crude is now over $80 a barrel. And look, um, here's the story. And I want you to look this up for yourself. Okay, don't take my word for a damn thing. And this doesn't mean that, oh, well, let me just say what I want to say. These hedge funds here, these Wall Street hedge funds who have like more, more money than uh, most people on the planet times uh, a lot here, they're betting pretty heavy on energy moving forward. All right, so you already know how this has played out. We had uh, soaring energy prices this lovely year. Then we had a low came, <coughs> excuse me, came down. <clears throat> I don't think it's going to last. And I've been telling you this for a while. Now it seems that my perspective is getting picked up by these uh, Wall Street hedge funds here who are, are putting some pretty big bets in that energy is going to climb. Now, look, this also plays into... Well, what you and I already know. Do you think, honestly, let, let, let's 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 talk, right? We're, we're friends, you and I. You know, some of you have been with me for a very, very long time. All right. Do you believe that there is a chance, even a small one, that some kind of relief is going to come for the people of the world, not just the people here in the United States, with regard to energy prices? Other than this low we've just had, I don't think so. Let, let's talk about what's the what, other than the debt market, which you all understand is the driver of the global economy. It's the driver of global stock markets. Okay, what's the root cause and the real reason behind this global inflationary event that we're all stuck in? Well, one thing should come to mind, and what is that? Currency devaluation. Currency devaluation. Look, I'm not the only guy who's been kind of ringing that bell for a while either. See, it's, it's an interesting concept. If you talk to like the average guy, the average girl about how prices are rising, they, they don't connect the, the dots. Right? The dots being it's the currency itself that is losing purchasing power. And henceforth, it takes more of the currency and whatever you're transacting in anywhere in the world to obtain the same thing that, let's say, a few years ago cost you a lot less because the, the currency itself had more purchasing power on a relative strength basis. And this is no surprise, people, to you or to anybody who follows this blog. We have watched the U.S. dollar on a relative strength basis, I'm going to keep saying this, you know, gain. Well, but, but, but what does that mean? It just means that the U.S. dollar, for now, uh, and probably will for a while, unless something major happens here, like a, a global world war, um, remain the prettiest bell at the ball. So when you see, for example, I know this is kind of com complicated, but... If you see, for example, the relative strength of the dollar or the Dixie moving higher, that does not mean, okay, because I get questions about this all the time. This does not mean that the dollar is, oh, oh, it's stronger and I can go out and I'll get more from my, from my currency. Now, no, it doesn't mean that whatsoever. It means compared to other currencies, okay, on a comparative basis, the dollar has gotten stronger. But collectively... Collectively, people, central banks are on a mission, uh, and it's obviously working, to destroy the purchasing power of their respective currencies. Okay, and this, there's another reason behind that. When you look at something like this, you have to say, okay, what, what else is underneath that? What's lying under it? Okay, so let's put this into a perspective as well. What is central banks hell, hell bent on doing? All right, well... Inflating. You all know that. Issuing more currency, period. So to a central bank, 
This is perfect. It fulfills what their goal is to continue to issue more of their currency, the units of debt, in, in, in insane amounts. You understand? And doing so devalues the currency. If you look at the overall pool, if you took every central bank in the world, okay, and you, and you threw all their currency, no matter what currency it might be, into a, a big pool, every bit of currency now that is added to that pool from whatever central bank dilutes the overall pool and, and subsequently you get a loss of purchasing power or a currency devaluation. Now I can promise you and I think look this should be a no-brainer and I would but I would love to hear your take on it. Do you believe are you ready here's the question so get ready to you know write to me okay. Do you believe that there's even a, a slight chance that central banks are going to stop devaluing their currency? Do you believe that's going to happen? In other words, do you believe, do you believe that by some miracle, all of a sudden, in, in whatever currency you transact in around the world, all of a sudden you're going to start you know, getting more for your money, for your currency? You understand? To me, the answer is a glaring, like, across the freaking sky, no. There's no way... In Greg Manorino's opinion, and this is just my opinion, all right? I want to hear yours, that central banks are going to stop devaluing their currency. So what could we expect? Let's look at gold and silver this year. Okay, let's reflect a little bit on this freak show over year 2022. Gold and silver have done very, very well. These have been real money for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. When you have some freak, some central banker tell you, go out of their way to say, the gold and silver are not real money? Well, like, I mean, come on, you laugh, right? Uh, of course, because they, because they believe that what they're issuing, a central bank's product, that's real money. It's real money. It's not real money, okay? Uh, it's, it, everything is credit or debt other than these. You understand? And that's central bank's product. It's debt. What are they doing? They're issuing it through this door. They're buying it back through another door. You know this. This mechanism, massively inflationary, is not going to stop. It's also going to continue to devalue the currency moving forward. Moving, and I, I honestly, I follow, obviously, the mainstream outlets. I, I want to see who and what they parade out there to speak, to open their freaking pie holes, to try to sell you some kind of lie. Uh, and it's, it's just, it's, it's astonishing to me how people can sit there and watch that. I would be willing to bet that nine out of 10 of you, maybe even more than that, believe what I'm saying, that currency devaluation is, is going to get worse. It's going to accelerate moving forward. It's not getting any better. It's not. And again, it goes back to what central banks are going to do. They're, they're determined, central banks are determined to fulfill their ultimate goal. What is the ultimate goal of every single central bank on this earth? None more so than the Federal Reserve. Why? Because the U.S. dollar is the world reserve currency. You understand? To fulfill their end game, they need to become the lender and buyer of last resort. And this is what they're doing here. And they're going to use any mechanism possible. They're going to take our so-called leaders and turn them into puppets. Every single one of them. And they're going to have these these things okay be paraded out on national television to tell you some kind of tale about why we need these amount of trillions of dollars in, in spending and why we need to spend tens of billions and hundreds of billions over to support a war that's expanding is going to keep on going or we have to fund this project or that project but they can't tell you the truth you're not going to find a single politician to tell you the truth that they must do this it's what is required by the debt-based economic model, the debt-based system, which is run 100% by central banks. And it's their interest that they have in mind, not yours and not mine. Okay, like I said, these politicians, they're all multimillionaires. You think they're even on the same page as you are? You think they know what it feels like to have to struggle to pay bills? No. Not at all. They have no conception of it at all. They're in a distorted reality because they're all getting kickbacks from everything you could possibly imagine and payoffs. You hear about this this uh, this new, you know, I'm not even going to mention it, this Zelensky BlackRock connection here. Uh, are they going to rebuild the I mean, you got to be kidding me. 
you know, much cash is being made over there. How much of it's really going to help the people? How much of it do you think? A fraction of a fraction? Of a fraction? Yes, that's, that's exactly my thought too. And I think we're all on the same page with this.